Oh wow, a Tales of Symphonia for 50 bucks? I'll take it! Oh man, Call of Duty Black Ops for 60 bucks? I'll take it! Oh man, Ratchet and Clank for... Games! You love them? I love them! We all hate spending them. It's like celebrating someone's birthday, like, awesome! I get to hang out with you, but uh... Here's a coupon from Denny's. If only there was a way to get them for free instead of having to spend an absorbent amount of price. If only. Let's not kid ourselves here. We like to buy things for lower prices, and the further they are from set price, the better. But we also don't want to be out of the curve for the latest game, so at the same time, you want to play the game as soon as it comes out, but there's a catch. One overpriced video game, please. The launch price. When a game finally releases, you get slapped with that $70 price tag and realize, wait a minute, that's $10 more than last year's. Sony was the main leading cause of the price hack since 2020, when their retail game started to become $69.99. MSRP. To be fair, PS4 games were still retailing at $59.99, even for cross-gen titles. I got God of War Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West for 60 bones each, but when I upgraded to the PS5 version, there was a $10 upgrade fee. 2K already did it with their NBA games, and Microsoft looks like they were planning on increasing the price to 70 bucks as well, so other companies are starting to do the same. Oh great, now I'm a transphobe, and I'm getting ripped off? But this is only for Xbox Series games and PlayStation 5 games. Thankfully, if you own the Nintendo Switch, you're still rocking that same price tag since 2005. Are you kidding me? The Legend of Zelda Tear of the Kingdom is the first Nintendo Switch game to be retailed at $70. Did y'all forget Skyrim exists? This newsletter isn't necessarily correct, but it is the biggest news to come out since recent times. But if we want to be technical, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition is the first game in the Switch library to be retailed at $70, and is it worth it? I can get an Xbox 360 copy for 4 bucks, what are you, nuts? If there's a cheaper alternative, and you have the equipment for it, getting the game for a lower value is far more desirable. If you own a PlayStation 3 or Xbox, this is a horrible deal since other alternatives are far more better. PC? Well, forget that. Wait for a Steam sale or buy the vanilla version and mod the shit out of that game and you're good to go. As for you Switch owners, if this is the only console you own? Uh, good luck? The non-special edition of the game with all its DLC is only 10 bucks less, retailing at $60, and the implementation of the new Anniversary Edition do give a hefty amount of new content. New dungeons, Bethesda's Creation Club, and you also get the Nintendo exclusives that work on both editions. But you are still paying 60 or 70 for a game released in 2011 that you can get for 4 bucks on older systems and PC, so proceed with caution if you really want to play Skyrim on Switch. But even so, Tear of the Kingdom? isn't even the second game to retail at 70 bucks. What if I told you there was actually a physical game that you can buy that costed 70 MSRP dollars that's not only playable on Switch, but is a fully-fledged AAA game before Tear of the Kingdom that not only adopted Sony's moniker for the price hike, but also released last year. Introducing... You serious? This is Card Fight Vanguard Deer Days. If you played Yu-Gi-Oh, then Card Fight Vanguard is a similar genre. It's a card game with monsters, attack points, defense points, and features that I'm too dumb to explain, but I'm sure a proper Vanguard player can explain better. It is also $70. Now, something else you may have noticed, I have the Japanese version. Normally, buying a game from overseas costs an absorbent amount, accounting for shipping and exclusivity price. Unless you get an order defect where you wanted to buy a game from Amazon, but they decided to give you a Japanese copy of Assassin's Creed 2, how the f*** did this happen? But remember when I said the game costed 70 bucks? Well, that was only for digital games only. And and there is no American physical release as of the publishing of this video. I got my Japanese copy that's also region free, so I can still read the English text for 40 bucks. The game costed 30 bucks normally, and shipping cost 10 bucks since it's directly from Japan. This is an old game that was released earlier in Japan, so it makes sense as to why the game's price dropped over time, but we got this game in the States last year at retail price. And since the Nintendo Switch is region free, the physical Japanese cartridge will work for my American Switch and register as an American game. That still didn't stop me from buying a Steam copy for 70 bucks. So the fact that I double dip must mean this is a really good game, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, so the game itself is an amazing Vanguard experience. I remember playing the crap out of this card game as a kid. Hell, I still have some of my old deck boxes with Dimension Police and Oracle Think Tank packs. So for me, I was absolutely willing to double dip for this game since I got friends who play on Switch and friends who play on PC.
This game is not worth 70 bucks by any means, let alone 110. There's barely any content. You get a bare minimum of what makes a Vanguard card game with a decent story and fun characters and antagonist. But if you really want to compare this to God of War Ragnarok or Horizon Forbidden West, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist is 40 bucks, and it's the Yu-Gi-Oh! equivalent to Vanguard Deer Days, only the exception being no voice acting and an abridged story. Imagine Nintendo making a Pokemon trading card game and it costs 70 bucks. That's just stupid. So this begs the question you guys are probably thinking. What games are justified to have a $70 price tag? Oh, silly. That game costs 60 bucks. You just put it on your corner right there. Overall, it really depends on your personal experience. Some people are even saying that 60 bucks is too much for a video game and would rather wait for a sale to play. I'm indifferent. I want to support the game devs that made an amazing game, but I understand the value of money and how getting the most bang for your buck is objectively the best way to enjoy gaming. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over the games that I personally own that costed 70 bucks. Not necessarily games that I bought for 70 bucks, but just games that I own and want to grade if it's worth 70 bucks or not. Yes, on the topic of Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, let's start off with these $70 games from our current generation. And I'm gonna league up Hogwarts Legacy, Dead Space, and Forspoken for the time being, because it's too early for me to discuss that, and I'm planning on making a separate review for those games in their own individual videos. Here we go, let's add Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, Gran Turismo 7, and Miles Morales Spider-Man. Okay, let's knock this one out of the park first. I think Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition is worth the $70. But that's kinda cheating. The Ultimate Edition includes the original Marvel Spider-Man, which I already think it's worth a $60 price tag. So getting Miles Morales is like getting a $10 bonus game. The original price for the regular edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales is 50 bucks, and I think it's a fine enough game to be 50 bucks. But if you don't own the original Spider-Man, the Ultimate Edition is way more preferred. So we cracked the code! What game is worth 70 bucks? if there's another game included. Well, what about the rest of my PS5 library? Horizon Forbidden West. Was a good game, not great. Nothing too groundbreaking, but I did enjoy the game when I played it. I don't personally think it's worth 70 bucks though. The story didn't grip me as much as the first game, I found the terrain absolutely gorgeous, but at the same time barren, and the combat is more or less the same as Horizon Zero Dawn. I would've been fine paying 50 bucks for this, or hell, getting an Ultimate Edition where you get the first Horizon Zero Dawn game included as well, but 70 for just this game is too much of an asking price for me personally. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Again, good game, platforming is fun, the mechanics of Time Rifting gives you an interesting mechanic to puzzle solving, but it's more or less the same Ratchet & Clank game. I do like the game more than Horizon Forbidden West, but I'm still not getting that $70 itch, so I think a $60 price tag is more worth it. The graphics are nice looking, but at the same time, I could sort of imagine what this game looks like on the PS4 hardware, and if the $10 difference is for the graphics? Like I said, it looks really good, but the PS4 already looked really good. That's another thing, the graphical leap between the PS4 and the PS5. I'm not really seeing it. The jump between the PS3 and the PS4 also wasn't that noticeable. The Last of Us for PS3 still looks as good as Killzone Shadowfall. The framerate on the other hand could use some work. If anything, that's a better exclamation for the price hike. Like, game companies are all about making the game look as realistic as possible, but the end result makes it feel like you're playing on quicksand. The Last of Us Part 2, as flawed as some people may think it is, looks beyond gorgeous for the PS4 title. The shading, the character model, facial animations, and background scenery, it's absolutely impressive what Naughty Dog could do with the PS4 hardware. Now look at The Last of Us Part 1 on the PS5 and it looks exactly the damn same. Not only can you not convince me of the graphical leap between the these two games, but you can't even convince me with a PS4 remaster either! The Last of Us Part 2 ran in 30 frames per second, and it's graphically equivalent to Gotham Knights, another game that runs at 30 frames per second. If a game looks better and runs smoother, then it's absolutely worth the price hike, but as it stands, the fact that some games are still 30 frames per second, uh, it sucks. I don't like it. We are roughly three years into the PS5 and Xbox Series X lifespan, and I'm honestly not too impressed with the jump. Okay, yes, SSD loading times, or lack thereof, is an impressive feature, and I do think it's an amazing innovation for the video game market, but if it's just the graphics that's being slightly better, I'm sorry. I don't think that's worth the $10 price increase at all. Now for God of War Ragnarok, maybe. So, with Spider-Man and Horizon, I felt their sequels are somewhat of a lesser product compared to their first game, which made me think that the $10 price increase wasn't worth it. But God of War Ragnarok is a better product to the original. It may look the same between both games, but Ragnarok improves so much on the gameplay and advanced the story that I feel like the added addition to the content is worth $70. Gran Turismo 7? 
no. 70 bucks for a game that looks like this? Forza Horizon 5 is 60 bucks and it looks way better. Here's an easy gimme to justify a game's price tag. Is the game good? If yes, then yeah, I'd say it's worth the money. Is it not? Then what the f are you doing? Gran Turismo 7 is easily the worst game I've played on my PS5 hardware. It got the bare basics with driving controls, with races and challenges, but the game is riddled with microtransactions and looks like a late PS3 game. Lastly, we got Returnal. I'm gonna be biased here for a second. So I bought this game on a sale for 40 bucks, and this game is worth $70. I'm always a sucker for roguelike games, and this game is no exception. The amount of replay value you get from this game, I definitely think it's worth it. So, that's another factor in determining games of higher status. If it's better, and if it's more than we get our money's worth, then yeah, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim would definitely be worth 70 bucks because of how amazing and open-ended the game is, but I'd also be a dumb to actually pay 70 bucks for it. I forgot to put Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the lineup during the recording of the footage, so I'm gonna explain it right now. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the remake of the original Modern Warfare 2, is it worth 70 bucks? No. The quality of the game is very good, but not good enough to warrant a $70 price tag. Despite this, it at least deserves the price more than The Last of Us Part 1, because at the very least, it's actually a completely different game, and not just a port. So in conclusion, what's worth a $70 game? Well, two main points I think we can take from this. A $70 game is worth one if you're getting the value it desires, whether it's a compilation of games, the quality of the game, or a combination of both. If we view a game worth said asking price, I believe it's worth it. But on the other hand, point two, do you really want to spend 70 bucks, period? Human nature in general wants to be pleased. Having that dopamine increase by pressing a few buttons and interacting with the game world, it's all good fun. But at the same time, human nature in general, we're cheap. We like to spend less to gain more and that's the overall message. Can you justify $70 for a game? No. Absolutely not, you can't even justify two nickels. We can say the game is worth 70 bucks or 60 bucks or give it a grade of 9 out of 10 or 2 out of 10, but the only way we can justify the price of a game is if we accept it. We're gonna have to accept it anyways because over the two generations of gaming, we've already accepted over time. So if this is gonna be the norm, then we're just gonna have to deal with it. But if you can tolerate the asking price for the retail game, then I don't think we have to worry about the price of said game. You know, I never really purchased an N64 or a PlayStation 1 game back in the day. Those games were probably like 30 or 40 bucks back then, huh? Oh wow, Ocarina of Time for 60 bucks. Game generations before the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. So Nintendo 64 games were retailed at 60 bucks at launch. I wonder how far we could go. Oh man, Earthbound! Just pretend I have a copy of Earthbound on my hands. Super Nintendo games were 80 bucks. That's right, more than the PS5 game. Adjusting this for inflation, and that is $177 you're spending back then. Well, we are lucky to be in an era of video game where it's actually cheaper compared to back then. Now that we know about the price hikes adjustment for possibly two generations from now, it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal. Oh wow, Final Fantasy X Remake for 80 bucks? That's like an SNES game!